Hello, everybody. Welcome to the morning show. We're coming to you today on WJOPLP Newburyport at FM 96.3 on Channel 9 and on Newburyport Community Media's YouTube station at ncmhub.org. I'm your host, Mary Jacobson, and I'm delighted to host this very special edition of The Morning Show. Playwright and theatrical director Anna Smolowitz is here to discuss her Holocaust-themed play, Children of Terrorism, and she's brought with her some of the children currently acting in the play to discuss their roles. Anna, let's start, if I could ask you, why and when did you write Children of Terrorism? I wrote it in 1971 uh, in Cincinnati, Ohio. I was getting a master's in theater. Uh, I was focused on children's theater, mm -hmm. and I had to write a play or a thesis for my master's degree, and this is what came out of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about what the play deals with. It deals with um, two days in the life of six children in a camp called Terezin, which is in Czechoslovakia, near Prague. Um, there were 60,000 people in that camp between 1942 and 44. About 16,000 children and about 100 survived. And um, uh, one of my students is going to tell you what happened the, the day I was inspired to write the play. But once I wrote it and performed it at uh, Cincinnati University, I, I knew it needed to be done more than once. Yeah. And now it's been done every year for 53 years. So I, yeah, it's been done more than once, for sure. Well, I, I've, I've seen it um, here in Newburyport a number of years ago. And it's an important play. And it's a very yeah. impactful play. And I'm just delighted to be able to um, talk about it on the morning show and to have Thank you bring you. the child actors. One of the things I did want to ask you about was I know that you've been getting a lot, a lot, a lot of requests for the show, more than usual this year. And I was hoping that you could tell us a little bit about how many requests have you been getting and what has led to the uptick in requests for children of terrorism. I've had a lot of discussions with uh, teachers, principals, superintendents, students who have gone to a school that had a hate crime. Yeah. Uh, this year that has increased in anti-Semitism 500 percent. And that's yeah. the greatest increase uh, in American history. Two percent of, of, of the world's population are Jews, but they have the highest percentage in hate crimes. Fifty-five percent. Uh, that's what I hear. Yeah. The increase and the, the level we're at is, is uh, just pretty bad. And so the play now comes in in view and in frame of taking care and addressing of that in the schools. We really want to go to middle schools and high schools and have a serious discussion after the play about what led to what happened to these six yeah. children. And um, hate. We talk yeah. about hate and prejudice and homophobia and, and the other and the xenophobia. Mm -hmm. we, we throw all that out and uh, we have a serious discussion. The kids pretty much take care of the kids in the audience and it's a yeah. wonderful meeting of the heart, spirit, and uh, age level. Yeah. Well, I remember vividly when I went to see the play that one of the most impactful parts of the play was when the lights went up and the actors came out and they interacted with the audience and it really brought home the message of the play and its immediacy and its impact. So, yes. so I'm delighted that you all are here and thank you so much for coming. You're currently acting um, in, I think you've been in several productions. So, well, if it's all right then, I'd like to hear from Please. the actors. Um, so I was hoping, first of all, if we could just ask each of you to introduce yourself by name and then tell us about the character that you play. Um, Ava, would you like to start? Sure. Um, so I'm Ava, Ava Arena, and I'm 14. I play C Celia in Terrazin. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm Wade Turner. Uh, this is my first year as Aaron. I've been with the show for, I think, a couple years now. Uh, I used to play Ruben, um, but yeah, this is my first year as Aaron, and uh, that's pretty much it for me. Stuart Voger. Um, I play Leo, and this is probably my like fifth play or something. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm Silas. I play Ruben, and I've like played twice. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Ava Valianti. 
And I play Miriam, but I have also played Rachel, or which is the female version of Ruben. And I've also played Leia, and I've been in the show for, I think, nine years now. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. That I remember that when I saw the show, and this was a number of years ago, as with your cast, there were older actors who had been in different roles in the play, and so um, it becomes um, something of a consistent theme then in your lives. And um, well, the next thing I'd like to ask you about is, you know, this is an impactful play, and it's a very serious play dealing with very hard issues. How has the play affected you? How has being an actor in the play affected each of you? Whoever would like to um, talk about that first. Um, uh, it's it's kind of affected my life in a, in a couple ways. In um, kind of, in the, there's a theater, my theater part of my life, and then my life life. Um, and theater-wise, this is acting-wise also, it's the probably one of the, if not the hardest show that I've ever done before. Um, just the writing, the history is incredible. And then my life life, it's educated me so much and um, just brings so much awareness to all the people that it is shown to. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> And it, I've got my friends to join who are unable to be here, but I just did it at my school. And oh. um, I, I'm hoping to continue to do it to as many other schools as I can, so. Oh, wonderful, thank you, Wade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, would anyone else like to? I would, yeah. Um, so I wanna say first that I'm extremely fortunate to be in this because, I mean, this play has become like a second home to me and mm. everyone, it sounds a little odd because it's about the Holocaust, but everyone here has become my family. Um, and I've been able to do amazing things, like we've been to California with the play. Uh, but I also feel like if there was one thing that I've really taken away from this throughout my life, it's to be a by, not a bystander, but an upstander to hate mm. and bullying. Go ahead, Cyrus. Um, <clears throat> this affects me in a way that, like, in my life, how hard this is, this play is really hard, and I see how how hard it was for these kids to go through. So in my normal what life, if I'm like, I like stop and I think about, if I'm gonna like complain about something, I think about what these people had to go through and how I don't need to complain about something that's so little compared to that. It puts a certain perspective on life, in other words. Thank you, Silas. Um, how this play affects me is I feel like all the people, kind of like Silas, every time I complain, I feel like it's nothing compared mm -hmm. to what they have had to go through. And, and basically every time I get like a cool chance to go somewhere, like a Celtics game or something. I think these kids never got to do this, so I better yeah. enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, that's well put. <laughs> um, so this play affects me in a number of ways, but um, something that really hits me is that like people come to me and they say, oh, you're in a play about the Holocaust? That must be so difficult. And yes, there are aspects of it that definitely, like I come home and I'm just like, wow, that was a lot, but I'm just telling their story. Like, these kids, it's like, I guess you could say it's, it's not very little compared to what they had to go through, mm -hmm. and definitely that every time I get to do something fun, I'm like, wow, they never got to do anything. They didn't get a chance to have a lot of fun, so I better enjoy it, like what Stuart said. Mm -hmm. Well, interestingly, a common theme in what you're all saying is that as difficult as the subject is, it's enhanced your life. Mm. And it has made you really focus your attention right. on appreciating what you have. And it sounds as though it's also helped you develop compassion mm. for people who don't have the things that you do. So those are pretty good outcomes, I would say, of, uh, of your um, being willing to do the hard work of acting in a play about a really difficult subject. Were you going to say something, Anna? No, I was just thinking I used to say to them, you know, like Ava, after six years, I said, Ava, you know, you can get out of the concentration camp. We will, <laughs> we will release you. <laughs> Go, my friend. And she said, no, I have good friends here, and I, yeah. I, I, I want to get that next role. And she was just sitting around trying the next girl. And then, the, <laughs> and then this is her beginning of the oldest girl. And she's quite young for the role. Mm -hmm. She's 13. 
Almost 14. Almost 14. Yeah. Almost. And <laughs> usually, usually the, the role goes to a 17-year-old. Okay. Usually. Yeah. Uh, it's a very uh, challenging role yeah. that she plays. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you all. Were you going to say something else, Wendra? Well, thank you all for those really fascinating comments. Well, another thing I wanted to ask you about was um, what do you hope people who see the play will take away from it? You've talked about the impact being in the play has on you. What impact do you hope the play has on the audience that comes to see you act in it? Uh, well, actually, there have been so many interesting reactions, which I'm sure everyone else can uh, agree on all the shows that we've done. Or if you've seen the show before, you would know that Mostly it happens to a youth audience, but it has happened to adult audiences too. Some of the more interesting parts of the show where the antagonist gets um, gets hit in the show and there's an incredible audience, audience reaction. Um, but I mean, th there's so many factors that go into that. Um, I don't know if someone else can explain better because I don't play Corinna, but I don't know if anyone else or if I could explain real quick so the Corinna factor. Mm. That character is the antagonist, but she's also a victim. Mm -hmm. She's a Jewish girl who is half Jewish and she's working on the half that isn't and feeling she'll be spared. Mm -hmm. And so she does the bidding of the commandant, the mm -hmm. female who's over them. And she betrays her her roommates mm -hmm. and it's not good to watch in the audience when she gets knocked down uh, by someone who would never knock anybody down this guy uh, that character this, they cheer they mm -hmm. often cheer and mm -hmm. we're not surprised by that because it's like you know hit the bully let's mm -hmm. get him back and all that and then that gives us a place to talk about it Ava what do we do after we're Are addressing you? it what they do is usually Anna or whoever plays Erin just ask the audience who clapped, uh, who cheered when she got she got hit, when she got beat. And usually a lot of people raise their hands and they say something like she had it coming. Yeah. And then they ask why. You know? And then the victim piece begins. Yeah. Yeah. And what would you do and do you know what yeah. you'd do if you're in this yeah. circumstance? So it really makes you thoughtful about your own reactions to things rather than your responses, which are usually more thoughtful. I just so. wanted to say, and this is not giving it away, but it also addresses becoming a bully. Mm. And that's what you say when you mm. say upstander or bystander, yeah. is that once you hit Corinna, mm -hmm. you have lost your, what is it? The humanity. humanity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. I was going to say that. It's like revenge isn't going to get you anywhere. Like if there's a bully and you hit them, if and they did that, that makes that doesn't make them not a bully and that doesn't make you not a bully. You, know, you both yeah. lose. Yeah. yeah. It, it kind of brings lose. you to their level. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um to talk about the point about what I hope people will take away yeah. from it is I hope people will take away from it that you can't dehumanize someone or think of them as other because then things like this can start to happen. Once you see someone or a group of people as less than, then you have an excuse to do whatever you want to them and not feel guilty. Yeah, yeah. Which is scary. Yeah, everyone yeah. is a human, you know? Yeah. Um, well, I feel like when Corinna hits, I mean, when Aaron hits Corinna, it has a big like what he said on the audience everyone like cheers and stuff and I remember in a play that I was in when um, someone we were asking them why they cheer for it, or someone raised their hands and said like they had it coming and they deserve that right yeah, yeah. right revenge yeah. <coughs> I think it's crazy yeah. did you want to say yeah. go ahead Eva. yes so thank you mm -hmm. uh, so <sighs> Another thing about like the audience reactions to that is one time we were performing for a middle school and we asked um, who do you think, like you can't know who you would be in that scenario so try mm. not to judge Corinna too harshly mm -hmm. and somebody raised their hand and said I would be the one that would do what it takes to survive and admitted it and mm. I just think like 
Anna, you told me that's never happened before. No. Yeah. Oh, interesting. And it's no. that, they I may just, have thought it, but they never said it. Yeah, yeah I just yeah. think that reaction is just, especially like in front of everybody like that, it's just, it's very brave yeah. when you think about yeah. it. Right. Mm -hmm. Just very to admit honest. It. I do have to say at this point, because it goes with that, that we were at a school, and this is 20 years ago, and a kid stood up, <clears throat> who was a big, strong kid who was an athlete, and he said, I'm not going to be afraid anymore after seeing the play. I don't want to be afraid. And he turns to the student body, whole school, and says, I'm gay. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was what we said. Oh, wow. And wow. so did the, his friends and teachers. You know, oh, wow. And he just said, I'm not going to be worried about people hating me just because I am who I am. I just saw so I'm wow. just not going to be afraid anymore. And this guy was a big kid. And you really, I, you know, you, OK. And uh, he sat down. And he came up afterwards and told our actors, uh, I'll never forget you. Oh and thank you so much. And um, today he's a politician. He, he has an in incredible role in politics. And it's interesting to follow his career because he speaks out now. He has no oh problem gosh. speaking out now. It's really interesting. This play was life changing. Yeah, for I this think individual. So. I think so. Yes. And I'm sure that it's life changing for many more people that might not come up to you and tell you that or say it in front of a group right, of people. Yeah, right. So I think people are, are scared to admit that like this changed their life or that they're yeah. like him. Like they need something to just push them to open up and tell everyone. Right. Yeah. But do you realize I do you guys what do you think of the fact, because you go to school every day, that you're looking at 500 kids who aren't talking? Mm. 500 kids are not talking or fidgeting or looking at their phone or whatever you want to do, you know, when you're bored. They're not doing that. Why um, not, in your opinion? I feel like because they're watching this play and they're saying, like, wow, those kids had to go through it. Like. Um, like, if they're bored, they're, I don't think they're going to be bored because they're probably either scared, maybe sad, or maybe, like, they have a big impact on their self because they just, like, are like, wow, I just can't believe it. I would totally agree with that. Yeah. yeah. I, think it's, uh, I think it's also because of um, judgment. I'm very afraid of what other people, um, other people think. Uh, it's, I mean, it's so difficult because I, there, I know there are so many kids who suffer in silence, but I mean, that's the, uh, the hope that this play brings is that life is too short to live in fear and to live in hiding and you just need to be yourself. You're talking about being bullied? Yeah. Mm. Is that what you're referring to? Being um, yeah. victims of bullies? Mm. Yeah, yeah, like, um, when you first see the play, it's just, it's amazing. It, like, hits you a lot. Mm -hmm. It's surprising when I first saw the play, literally the whole time my mouth was like open. I was I was like I was really surprised because I didn't expect it to be so heavy and mm -hmm. so good. I also think that people might even be in shock because a lot of people don't know what happened. A few days ago, I had a person at my school who asked me who Anne Frank was. Mm, okay. And I just I think that people might not know enough about it, so this could be life-changing as well because of the information, you know? And we have to tell the story so it doesn't happen again. Absolutely. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't know how many children, like the statistics mm -hmm. you gave at the beginning about how many children were taken to terrorism and, and, and the vast majority of them died there. And I think a lot of people just don't know about that. And it's important right. that people know how brutal hatred is. And Anna, you had said since like, what, six million, like, kids died? Two million kids, six million oh, yeah. people. Six yeah. million people. Jews. That's yeah. why there's six people in the play, right? Yes. Mm. Yes, that's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. You're going to say something about Chaim. Go uh, for it. Yes, so one of the main reasons I do the play, other than, you know, the obvious that we need to keep passing on this story or else, you know, it could happen again. Um, the main reason I do this is because of Chaim, who actually inspired Anna to write this play. Anna, you said that you went to a, which museum was it? It was an art museum in Cincinnati. An art museum to, um, and there was a letter written in the Holocaust by a boy named Chaim Lando that basically said, remember us, don't let, a, don't let this story be forgotten, and the letter that said how horrible the conditions were, and it's actually very similar to a letter written by the character Miriam um, in the play, and 
uh, I, I do this play for Haim because Haim died at 14. Mm. I'm 14. Mm. And that just totally, it, it just hits me in the face, like, just to die so young. And yeah. there are kids who died much younger. Yeah. Mm. And I just think, I think Haim is remembered. And I think I just do this to keep telling his story. When you do that, Ava, you create a legacy for Haim mm. that means that he continues. And that letter um, was purposive. And I think that's a beautiful, wonderful, very loving thing that you do. So thank you for sharing that story with us. So, mm. yeah. Uh, I just wanted to talk about Auschwitz, if you could believe it. Um, I believe it. Because yeah. I, uh, two million children died, and yeah. the majority in Auschwitz, in one camp through the gas chambers, and that's just a severe thing to say, but mm -hmm. it's history. Um, so I've been invited to return. I've been there twice. Uh, as my husband said, how about maybe we could go to Hawaii? <laughs> and I'm like, no, nah, i got work to do, and it's going to be at Auschwitz. <laughs> so I've been invited a third time to speak there, and there will be a, uh, a peace conference, Buddhist monks, Catholic mm -hmm. priests, rabbis. My, my idea of a good time. Yeah. And um, we'll be walking through Auschwitz, which is very tough to be there, and know that all my, my grandparents, my sister, my cousins, aunts and uncles, they were all killed right mm -hmm. there. And I'm going to walk through the gas mm -hmm. chamber and light a candle for mm -hmm. each one of them and mm -hmm. say their name out loud. So I don't forget them. And yeah. um, I, I think when you see history, when you go there and you're looking right at it, uh, and you're looking at a room full of shoes, a gym room full of shoes, mm -hmm. suitcases, uh, eyeglasses, a whole gym of eyeglasses. You give a sense of how many that is. Yeah. Uh, six million is zeros. Yeah. Uh, they don't have names, but they sure have shoes. And you know, you see ballet slippers, and you see boots, and you see red heels, and you think, who was in those shoes? Yeah. They become individuals, and that's yeah. what I'm co going back to look at. Well. You have already gotten an invitation to come back to the morning show after that Thank and you. talk to us about Thank it. You. And I'll, I'll really look forward to hearing about the peace part of the conference and yes. you know what the, how they talk about how we can contribute to making a more peaceful, more loving world. Yes. Um, well, one of the things I told you I wanted to hear about from you because it's such an important play and such an important message. And I honor all of you for acting in it and for the lessons that you've given me and people who are watching the show today. I honor you for writing the play and creating this incredible legacy, but it's tough. So how do you go back to normal life? <laughs> how do you take care of yourselves after you're being in this play? Stuart. Um, well, I, I really don't know. I mean, the next day I'm like, wow, that was a lot to be in that play. <laughs> and then I just, I go to school, I, 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 I do math, I do foundations, and then I kind of forget all about it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like tourism has really taught me to like speak up for myself and like mm. not be afraid. Because today, um, I wore a headband to school because I felt like my hair was bothering me. And a couple kids said that I looked like an idiot. And I said, um, I, 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 if I hadn't been in the play, I, w I wouldn't say anything. But if, since I had, I'd said, I don't think I look like an idiot. <laughs> Good for you. I, I'm not, I'm, I don't look like an idiot, and it's just like that I have this headband. It doesn't matter. You were an upstander for yourself. You were. Good for you. Thank yeah. you for telling us that. Yeah. How I kind of get back from, like, doing such a heavy play is that like after either like a show or something what I, I like if like my mom picks me up it probably annoys her but I just like talk and talk I just, <laughs> I talk about this to just like to just make it feel like a normal thing so it doesn't really affect me during like the rest because I talk so much that I don't want to talk about it anymore because I've talked so much about it I don't think about it yeah so I mean the first thing I have a guide for the first day afterwards you, you eat lots of ice cream, you take a long shower, you go in your room and you listen to music. And that's, that's what I do. But I think, I think the thing is, you just have to give yourself some room to breathe. And mm -hmm. then I've kind of learned just how to live with it. I don't really know how, but mm -hmm. I, I can, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just become part of my life, mm -hmm. and so. Yeah. Wade, how do you do it? 
Um, I mean, I kind of just take your advice. It's pretty much when everyone is left and we're undressing and getting back in our our clothes and getting out of our costumes, you always say, go home, watch a movie, eat some ice cream. So I, I kind of do that. I mean, it's so <laughs> impactful. Like, the first show is always the toughest. When the lights are on, you don't know. It's like no one's there. And then you're, they're not lines anymore. You become mm -hmm. those people. Yeah. So yeah. it's different. It's uh, difficult to pull away from that sometimes, yeah. but um, you just kind of have to get into that zone to go in and come out of it when you can. So you have to. Have to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and Ava's, Ava's got the last word here. <laughs> um, so I have to say something that really helps me get out of the, the Holocaust after a show <laughs> or a rehearsal is... This is going to sound kind of cheesy, but every the cast, I have to say, like you guys are just amazing, and everybody is just so nice, and you can really just forget about it and just have a laugh after, which mm. is not kind of hard to imagine, but after the show last time, we walked into a little store, and we bought pints of ice cream, and we just sat there and spooned ice cream. There's a theme here. Everybody was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ice was, cream is a healing wonderful. food. It, really it is. is. It is. After one of the plays, um, I, I went straight to soccer. Oh, okay. How I cool just, is sometimes that? you can kick a ball. Yeah, yeah. I, I just got the out of me when I like, kicked a ball. I, yeah. I, I actually, it was tears in, I, it, made, it made me more motivated for the game because I wanted to get out of Interesting. it. Interesting. And I, I actually ended up leading my team in victory. Ooh. Wow. I was, I was just motivated. Very <laughs> <laughs> cool story. Yeah. Awesome. One of, one, of my, uh, one of my first shows, it was a double show day, and uh, I remember in between shows we went to get some lunch, and so... Um, we walked around uh, downtown Newburyport and uh, Holocaust clothes and dirt in our face and <laughs> bruises and uh, Jewish stars. Yeah, yep. we're just wow. walking around. Everyone thought we were crazy. One guy came up to me and was like, "What are you doing?" I said, "I'm in the, I said, I'm in the Holocaust," and I walked away. And <laughs> that's, that's pretty much how it went. Yeah, <laughs> you, you notice the lightheartedness of these wonderful kids. I mean, they they really are who they are. Yeah. Compassionate, kind, friendly, yeah. and and in, you know, respecting each other, and that's the thing we're teaching, right yeah. through the acting and to the audience. Yeah. We're teaching as and modeling that. Absolutely. Yeah. Which is a powerful and impactful thing to do. And how do you go back to normal life? Because you're you're with Children of Terrorism a lot. Fifty three years. Yeah. I've done it every year. Um, I do have other directors. Thank God, yeah. Katie, who directed the film of the play. God for Katie and others and um, I, I that's how I step away is uh, as I let them it's hard to let the baby go but yeah. I do um, I feel like it's my uh, I was born in a DP camp after mm -hmm. the war and my parents survived and I feel I have some debt some yeah. for my life my sister died I lived mm -hmm. and so I, I really can't step away too long yeah. that's why I don't go to Hawaii I go to Auschwitz yeah. because I feel that's that's my uh, debt for mm -hmm. my right to be here. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd say you've paid it over and over and over again. Thank you. Um, Thank and all you. of them, I'm sure, would testify to that as well, yeah. given the impact they've all been describing. Um, it'd be nice if you could go to Hawaii too, though. <laughs> <laughs> or if not, that Hajis. <laughs> I don't know if we have time, but a quick dream. I dream, I've dreamt this. There was two buses, and all my actors, my kids, were, I, you know, we've gone to Cuba, we've gone to wow. Scotland, we've gone to Germany, all these places. So the bus says Disney, and the other bus says Auschwitz. And the bus with <laughs> Disney is a guy with ears and yellow sunglasses. And I'm like, all my kids are running to that bus, and I go, no, you have to go to Auschwitz <laughs> right now. <laughs> and I'm going, and, and in my dream, here's my dream, I have to get on the steps to Auschwitz, and all the kids go to the bus to Disney, and I'm like, I'll do the play by myself. Oh, <laughs> that's poignant. That's my dream. <laughs> that's my dream. <laughs> okay, you need a third bus that says yes. Air airport to the plane to Hawaii. Uh, okay, can we? Yes, I'll agree. You, yeah. You. All right. I'll, I'll incorporate that. <laughs> okay, <future>. good. <laughs> yes. Well, I can't thank you enough, all of you. Thank you so much. It's just yeah. been a wonderful experience. Um, you've touched me deeply. I'm in awe of your, um, your compassion 
and your dedication. And I love the way that you've formed a family together through the work that you do in this play. And you have <laughs> such an impact. Um, it's clear to me. Um, you've given some stories about people who let you know what the impact was. But you know that's only going to be a small fraction of the people who's been, who have been deeply impacted, and you'll never know. Um, but I know they're out there and they've been impacted. Um, so thank you all so much for that. Thank you, Anna. This has just been such a wonderful, special show thank to you. be able to do. Thank you for and having us. And thank you for having the idea. And thank you for doing the play. Absolutely. Um, so thank you all very much. It's just been an honor to have you here. Yeah. So. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. My pleasure. Well, that's all we have time for for today. Um, and it's just been an honor to have you here. Please watch again next week for the morning show Thursday at 9. Take care, everybody. Be well. Eat ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> You'll you feel better. Eat all right. Eat ice cream after this. Yeah. Yes, I think so. I, I should have brought some. <laughs> That's it, everybody. Yeah.